Hello everyone, in this tech tip video, we're going to take a look at how to get started with Verges Studio Web. Let's dive in. Verges Studio Web is a no-code web mapping application builder that helps organizations deliver cutting-edge applications. If you'd like to learn more about what Verges Studio Web is, please watch our introduction to Verges Studio Web tech tip. To get started with Verges Studio Web, let's navigate to apps.vergesstudio.com. This is where we'll be able to access the web-based designers. Let's click Launch and then sign in using our ArcGIS Online account. Now we are brought to the Verges Studio Web dashboard page where we can see the web app templates as well as previously created applications. We have a range of different templates from more minimal layouts to more complex ones with 3D scene viewers. Most users will find that the WebGIS default template will fit most of their use cases, so we'll go ahead and select it to get started. Every Vertigis Studio web app is built from a combination of rows and columns. As I use the selector tool to hover over the components in the components tree, I can see where they are located on the map. I can also use the selector tool on the map to identify where the component is in the components tree. Let's modify the home panel to better fit our use case. In this video, we will create a public facing application that allows users to search across our tax parcel database and create tax parcel reports. So let's change the title to tax parcel map and the subtitle to city of Naperville. Notice how we are using Markdown to format the text in the panel. For a full list of the Markdown syntax available in Verges Studio Web, visit our documentation page. The link is in the description below. Let's also remove the Verges Studio logo at the bottom of the page. Great. Now let's add the city of Naperville's logo to the map. I'm going to use the selector tool to select the existing logo, and then I'm going to paste in the URL holding our logo. Keep in mind that you can also select an image directly from your computer if you like. Let's change the alternate text to City of Naperville logo. Since the new logo is larger than the previous one, we're going to have to minimize it a bit to fit it into our header. So let's navigate to the column component that holds the toolbar and the image. Let's change the image width to 200 pixels. Let's also change the colors of the buttons to align better with the City of Naperville's branding. For that, we'll go to Services, then Branding, and input our desired color. Next, let's add our data to the application by using the Selector tool and clicking on the map. We're then going to select our web map containing our tax parcel data. If you have 3D data that you like to import, you can do that down here. But since we don't have any that we'd like to use at this time, I'll remove the 3D scene that comes with the template. Next, let's modify our toolbar to better fit our needs. Let's remove a few of the tools we don't need. For example, the drawing tool, the measure tool, and a few other ones. Now that we have some more space, let's add a custom tool that we built using Vredage's Studio Workflow to help us search for data on the map. We're then going to search for a workflow called Search Tax Parcels, and we're going to select the second one here. Let's change the name to Search Parcels. We can also change the icon to something a bit more representative of the workflow. Now, when I select our new tool, the workflow will begin running, and I'll be able to interact with our map data. Next, let's add a feature action to one of the layers on the map. A feature action is a tool or command that is run upon selecting a feature. In this video, we will add a PDF report to the tax parcel layer. Let's rename the feature action to parcel report. And now when we click on a tax parcel, we will be able to select our newly created feature action and generate a PDF. So to recap, we have chosen a template to give us a head start on creating our application. We explored how every application is made up of rows and columns. We looked at how to edit components, add images, and add workflows to the toolbar. And finally, we added a feature action to a layer on the map to generate a PDF report. Let's save the application by going to File, Save. This saves our Vertigis Studio Web application as an item within ArcGIS Online. Let's take a look at it in the Info tab. From here, you can set the sharing permissions and open the application to begin using it. You can also create copies of your Vertigis Studio web application representing the development stage it's in.
This is particularly useful if you would like to make edits to your application without affecting production applications. You can also set unique sharing permissions for each application stage. That wraps up our tech tip on getting started with Virtual Studio Web. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to start building web mapping applications today, go to apps.virgestudio.com for a free 60-day trial. You can also download a sample application that includes workflows, reports, and print templates to get you started. The link is in the description below. If you'd like to keep learning more about Virgis Studio Web, check out our other videos in our Tech Tip series. Bye for now.